Good morning. Today is Tuesday, December 14th. We're bringing you the latest news making headlines to help start your day. Breaking from overnight, a fire took the lives of five people, including two children. It broke out on Janet Lane in a neighborhood right off I-285 and Glenwood Road. Our Rebecca Schramm is live near the sea. I'm sorry. Three, two. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, December 14th, and we're bringing you the latest news making headlines to help start your day. Breaking from overnight, a fire takes the lives of five people, including two children. The fire broke out on Janet Lane in a neighborhood right off I-285 and Glenwood Road. CBS 46's Rebecca Schramm is live near the scene. She starts our coverage in today's Morning News Rewind. It's hard to even understand what she is going through right now. She lost five loved ones, her daughter, two granddaughters, and two of her brothers. It happened right here, the fire on Janet Lane. This is off of uh, Glenwood Road near Decatur, outside the perimeter. You can see, uh, boy, this, this house is in bad shape. And when firefighters first got here, let me show you some video we shot earlier. Uh, when firefighters first arrived, it was probably around 1230 this morning, and it was a rough situation for them because they learned there were four people trapped inside. This is a family of 10. Uh, those four people did not survive. One of them, a child. We learned another child died at the hospital, and we spoke with the grandmother shortly after she came back here to the scene, and this is what she told us. My grandbaby, I had to go and ID her. She passed too. She was six years old, a little regular. And how many other children? My other grandbaby, Angel, and my daughter, Terriana, oh. my brothers, Pedro and Tim. <laughs> So sad to think about what she's going through right here close to the holidays. She also tells me that a sister of hers is in really bad shape. She uh, was burned pretty badly and is still in the hospital fighting to survive. But I want to show you some of the photos that she and other family members provided. These are her two granddaughters who died in the fire. Uh, one of them, three year old. Uh, Angel and six year old Aaliyah. She also lost these girls mother, her daughter. This is 30 year old Teriana regular uh, 30 years old. And this is a, one of the brothers that she lost Timothy regular. Another brother also passed away in the fire. We do not have a photo of him, but we understand his name is Pedro. Uh, and we hope to get a photo of him soon. But again, such a tragic loss for this mother, this grandmother, this sister. She lost five family members in this fire. And again, she has another sister who is fighting for her life. So we hope you'll keep them in mind uh, as you go about your day today. Keep them in your thoughts. This is a family that will need thoughts and prayers of an entire community. We're going to have updates for you throughout the day. We're live in DeKalb County, Rebecca Schramm, CBS 46 News. A death is underway right now. More than 100 people are still missing in Kentucky. We know that this was the deadliest December tornado outbreak on record. This is brand new footage of the devastation left behind in hard hit Mayfield, Kentucky. That's where we find Daryl Forges with the latest. So far, at least 74 people lost their lives here in Kentucky. The age range of the victims range between as young as two months old to 86 years old. Now on Monday marked day three of cleanup over my shoulder. You can still see the damage, but people have been cleaning up all day for the past few days, but they've also been trying to figure out what's next. At least five tornadoes have torn a massive path of death and destruction, spanning more than 200 miles across Kentucky. I'm in belief of this uh, of this construct. This will be one of the large ones. A National Weather Service official reports the tornado that devastated the town of Mayfield was on the ground continuously for at least 128 miles and believes it was likely longer. The longest track, I believe we're up to an estimated 227 miles. That would uh, be one of the longest in U.S. history, if not the longest. Kentucky state leaders becoming overwhelmed with emotion. While announcing new information on the tornado relief fund during a press conference Monday afternoon, to start with, this fund is going to help cover funeral expenses for those we tragically lost in the storm. Officials say it could be weeks on end, maybe longer, to get a grip on the scope of the devastation. 
we don't really know by any stretch of the imag imagination of all the infrastructure damage yet. President Biden is now set to view the destruction in Kentucky firsthand Wednesday. With each passing day, the human impact of this devastation is uh, just uh, the depth of the losses are becoming more and more apparent. And that relief fund the governor talked about, so far they've raised over $4 million for victims affected. In Mayfield, Kentucky, I'm Daryl Forges. Meantime, federal and state officials are looking into the collapse of an Amazon distribution center in Illinois during last week's tornado outbreak. At least six people were killed. The governor now looking into strengthening building codes. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, starting its own investigation. Amazon says it believes that building was built to code. CBS 46 is teaming up with the Salvation Army to heal the heartland. You can text HL Tornado to 51555 to help support relief efforts. Any money donated goes directly to relief operations. 636 this morning, we're keeping an eye on today with the other stories you need to know. A magnitude 7.4 earthquake struck southeast Indonesia overnight. It sent hundreds of people fleeing out into the streets. <laughs> That powerful earthquake has caused more than a dozen aftershocks and a lot of the people living nearby have fled to higher ground too. Fortunately, there was no tsunami warning and no reports of anyone being injured. Four people now facing charges after a human trafficking victim is rescued in Fulton County. One suspect is not pictured here. State investigators say they are linked to the sex trafficking of a 14 year old who was missing for seven weeks before being found. A consumer alert this morning from Target. The retailer is recalling 175,000 letters to Santa mailboxes because the mail slot on top can be very sharp. Already there are more than half a dozen reports of people being cut. Those mailboxes can be brought back to Target for a refund in the form of a gift card. This morning, you can grab a cup of coffee with the local officers who keep your neighborhood safe. The Gwinnett County Police Department is hosting coffee with a cop. It's happening at Cafe Blue in Duluth at 930. And don't forget to bring an unwrapped toy for the fill the sleigh toy drive. And we're so happy to bring you this. We've got some uh, some good news on that dog that was set on fire in Decatur. The shelter that's caring for the Labradoodle named Will says his eyes and nose are looking a whole lot better. Now the rest of his body's got a ways to go though, but uh, he's getting there. That dog was engulfed in flames last week when he was spotted in Decatur. Right now there's a $7,000 reward to help catch the person who did this to that pup. We're back right now at 644 and happening today, a coroner is set to release the results of a brain test on former Atlanta Falcons cornerback Philip Adams. His family agreed to have his brain tested for CTE, the degenerative brain disease caused by repeated head trauma and concussions. In April, Adams took his own life after killing six people in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Investigators say Adams killed a doctor, his wife, two of the couple's grandchildren, and two air conditioning techs who were working at their home. Adams is a former NFL cornerback. He played professional football for five years, ending his career with the Falcons after the 2015 season. New this morning, the National Football League will require its players, coaches, and team personnel to get the COVID booster shot by December 27th. 37 NFL players tested positive for COVID on Monday alone. Meanwhile, Britain is reporting its first death of someone who got the Omicron variant. Information about that patient is unknown right now, but officials say Omicron is spreading at a quote phenomenal rate. In a national address, Prime Minister Boris Johnson issued a public plea to get booster shots. Strict new lockdown measures went into place yesterday, and UK officials say at least 10 patients are being treated for Omicron across England. It is uh, 15 minutes till 7 happening today. Georgia State Patrol is launching its drive sober or get pulled over campaign. Experts say one person is killed every 52 minutes in a drunk driving related crash. And our Tori Cooper is live at the state capitol with more on the push to keep drivers and passengers safe. Tori. Yeah, Rob, Georgia State Patrol says this is really the time of year where they start to see that dramatic uptick in DUI related crashes, and that's why they're increasing patrols. It's a crushing reality that can hit close to home for any Georgia driver. Stan was greatly involved in his community. Department of Natural Resources Colonel Thomas Bernard says for him, it's even more personal. Was actually uh, jogging down the road when uh, this individual who was under the influence uh, hit and killed him. 
this holiday season, law enforcement agencies will now be increasing patrols looking to spot impaired drivers as part of their drive sober or get pulled over campaign. Yeah. Experts say one out of every four fatal crashes involves a drunk driver in the U.S. Just within the last five years, 83 Georgia drivers died in a DUI crash all within the last 15 days of December. And data shows DUI crashes are three times higher at night. Bernard now hoping Georgia drivers make the right decision this holiday. It falls back to a decision, right? You know, if you've had too much to drink, some, call someone to come get you or, or whatever the case may be. Find an Uber, find a way, but don't, don't make that decision to drive. Now, GSP tells us they will also be keeping an eye out for aggressive drivers and distracted drivers this holiday. Reporting live in downtown Atlanta, I'm Tori Cooper, CBS 46 News. Tori, thanks. Trending this morning, one reality TV star is a step closer to becoming an attorney. And she has a positive message for her fans. Our Brooks Baptiste joins us with the stories topping your social media feeds. I didn't see this one coming, Brooks. Yeah, and don't hate on her because it's official. Kim Kardashian <laughs> has passed California's baby bar law exam. And there's been questions about what exactly is that? Well, it's formerly known as the first year law students examination. The reality TV star posting the news to Instagram saying this was her fourth attempt. Kim K says she was also back battling COVID-19 during one of the first attempts, but in her post, she went on to encourage her fans saying to never give up even when you're holding on by a thread. Time Magazine naming Elon Musk as person of the year. The Tesla and SpaceX CEO became the world's richest person earlier this year, impacting life on Earth and beyond. Time has named the person of the year since 1927. The magazine picked someone who impacted a group, a movement or an idea over the past year. All right, and I've got a question for you. What is the most you'd pay for an ugly Christmas sweater? I'm not going more than 40 or 50 bucks. Well, take a look at this, at this Christmas sweater considered to be the world's most expensive. And we're told it'll run you about $40,000. Now it contains 24 karat gold thread shipped from France and features a reindeer with a Santa hat, as you can see. Yeah, on the neckline, there are nine stars and those stars contain 150 diamonds in total. Mm. So for $40,000, it could be yours, but um, I, it can't be mine. I'm not doing that. That is nuts. I, will, I like my Christmas sweaters, free 99. Thank you. I was going to say, the I think 40 part. or 50 bucks is a little too much for the really ugly Christmas. Yeah. We well, got to think, it's the, that, that's the trend now. Well, listen. You, everybody wants to have the ugliest Christmas sweater. I know. You got to pay for it. But the thing is, the ugly Christmas sweater <laughs> really mm. is supposed to be the one your grandma gave you right. or you know, your favorite Aunt Betty or whatever. You know, the one stuck away in the closet. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody closet. ever wants to Something rid of. they don't even know they have because right. it's too ugly for them. It was just decades <laughs> old. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thanks for watching CBS 46 News. Watch us live wherever you are, our mobile and our streaming news app. You can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.